What a tragic episode. I mean, if you didn't watch after the credits, you gotta watch after the credits. That scene really changes that entire death sequence from being something where I was a little humming and hawing. Does this dude actually care for Ranko or was it more of a this is business, just another target to scratch off the list and to see the bloody engagement ring after Panda shoots to kill? Wow, Akiba Made War is not playing around, man. Now, I have to say this might be my favorite episodes of the show yet because Panda's been a mystery and honestly, after last week, a lot of people had me believing that maybe the dude who seemingly had some interest in Ranko, which kind of all popped up in this episode. We've never seen Panda and him on screen at the same time. What if he's under the panda suit? I was like, damn, that's a pretty good theory. And then they decide to go the extra mile and say, no, we're going to make that a tragic love story. Panda's actually the one responsible for that whole massacre at the start of the show prior to the modern day setting. And the one who gave the order, Nagi is now on our girl Ranko's hit list, the very top. There's no one else. And, I mean, a suicide run from Ranko seems all but guaranteed, as the head of Creature Land is, uh, well, she hired someone whose entire job was taking out pigs, taking out maids that weren't accepted or liked, and the fact that he said no, I mean, even if Panda didn't do it, I should say, then ultimately he still would have got killed and honestly th i'm just wondering that kind of what if now what if he didn't get killed there what if he didn't get shot there what if he made it to ranko she would have pulled a gun attempted to kill he would have proposed they might have actually left they might have actually escaped the hell that is this maid war and that's what hurts i think the most because from the beginning of this show i said this is the most unnatural setting. Anyone who's not trapped here should be able to look at this objectively and say, you want to get the hell out of Dodge. You want to find a normal, safe life. But the almost Stockholm Syndrome gets you, and I mean, at this point, they're in too deep. Deep, you can't leave. You'll get killed if you attempt to leave. So to have something where she almost had that normalcy, that normal sense of life, a girl who, you know, ultimately people are saying is too old for the job, she's suffered way more than probably most of these girls combined, and the fact that there was a legit normal way out and then it just all ends in bloodshed. What a mafia way to go and I love it, but goddamn does it sting. This was a great episode. I mean, the panda stuff makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I remember from the beginning, like a lot of people are like, initially the opening, it had a blurred character, right? And I was like, damn, that's gotta be panda. And then when it got revealed that our kind of gray-haired character got revealed to be the one in the opening, everyone was like, well, see, Panda's just, you know, it's a, it's a weird character. But I was like, no, there's someone underneath that suit. There 100% is. But over the episodes, I've kind of put that thought in the back burner, being like, you know what, I'm not really going to focus too much. Eventually, when the time comes, they'll touch upon the Panda. And I figured it would be the end arc. I thought it'd be something related to it. And I guess I could say I was kind of right, because it does reveal the true antagonist the true final target, that being Nagi. However, the whole love story twist with the whole concept of this hitman who basically, you know, has only ever killed but actually fell in love, the person responsible for Ranko's loss and just everything that kicked off with that shooting, is actually been underneath the panda suit this whole time. And I think when you go back and look at all the scenes, because every time something crazy's happened, panda's been there. Ultimately started the gas uh, within the first couple of episodes, so... Our girl Ranko could explode the building. Just constantly, Panda was there to either clean up the mess, do something crucial, or make it so characters that were part of this cafe wouldn't die. And to see almost like the redemption, and that's kind of what it felt like, almost like redemption, that she hurt Ranko so hard, and, you know, ultimately this was like her way of making amends. And, I mean, based on the blood, obviously was behind the door before Ranko came in, it doesn't look like Panda was hurt herself, it probably was just the blood of this man. But at the same time, I just don't see Panda making it to the end either, so I guess we'll see where it goes, but it was a pretty crazy episode. I mean, I wasn't really expecting anything too, too crazy. I mean, I actually was planning on doing a double review next week because I'm a little busy today, but I was like, you know what, I just like Akiba Made War. I gotta give this one a shot. And the fact that it was the Panda reveal episode with everything, I'm so glad I didn't do a double review because this episode I think deserves to be to be discussed on its own merits by itself and what a crazy ass episode. So with a couple episodes left to go, my natural gut impression is episode 11 will be more of the establishing war kind of like Rambo style, Ranko's gonna go do a suicide run 
and episode 12 will finish off that action with some sort of epilogue. Something I've been kind of feeling for a bit is that Nagomi very much could end up being the leader of Creatureland. Like, that could be a direction they want to go. And if the final target is the current leader of Creatureland, Ranko dying could be a guarantee, could be a very likely bet, but also Nagi dying seems all but guaranteed itself. And the only way that I could see something like this coming full circle is if the most normal girl at the start of the show ends up in a position of power where she then transforms Creatureland into a normal maid cafe environment. And if that's the direction they want to go, while it would probably limit the possibility of a season 2, I could see it being one hell of an ending that makes a 12 episode anime not need a season 2, and make it come full circle from going, why the hell are maids doing this, this is complete wrong nonsense, to holy shit this is what maids are always supposed to be from our own experience, and transitioning a mafia story in that way could be the likely bet, and I would absolutely love it if they did something like that, but I could also see them going the direction in very Akiba made war fashion that our manager ends up as the leader of Creature Land. And if that's the case, it's going to be even more chaos than what we're currently expecting. And if that's the case, season two is all but a given in my opinion. So those are my kind of two likely bets right now. But then again, maybe Rank will end up on the throne. That would be a pretty cool twist, I'm not gonna lie. But ultimately, I'm excited to see where this one goes. It's been one of the more refreshing I guess kind of like thriller crime drama stories in a way, right? But the fact that it's coded in this made aesthetic and just to get that brief taste of them on top with their with their house packed and everyone loving the pigs because of the end of last episode, you knew it wasn't gonna last for long, but the way they just let the ball drop and just everything come crashing down, leave it to Occupa Made War to just say once again, still one of the most refreshing shows that I think I've watched this year. As much as I have theories on how this all might end, I mean my biggest bet and likelihood is I don't know exactly where the show will go in any particular episode. I guess my hope of having a racing episode is probably all but denied at this point because with two episodes to go, it's seeming like it's going to be an action episode. Maybe, maybe they could sneak it in, so that's a bit of a missed opportunity in my opinion, but hey, maybe a season two could deliver because these killer maids and race cars is just it's a recipe for success let's be honest but we'll see where it goes i have full faith that this one's gonna end on a bang and a bloody bang at that so thoughts feelings yourself down below theories if you got any of course leave like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here you can also consider supporting the patreon i got a bunch of live reaction series going on over there and you can also get video shadows like a few are about to get here so we got Aloon, jeremy estrella and Dwayne. so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one